Greetings, nerds. This is Stan the Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm pissed off. I'm pissed, pissed off. off. You, you like, like I had the winds in my head sail, and you just blew them all out. Oh, come on. What did I do now? What did I do now? Other than like, I... telling you to watch The Flash. Oh, you're not no, 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 because I, I watched the I did watch the Flash last night. Okay. Um, I was surprised by how many shows I was able to watch between <laughs> Sunday and today. Yeah. And but I still stand by. Like when you sent me that direct me- direct message, and I said, "Whoa, sir, thank you," but I will watch it when I choose to watch it, because we're not covering it tomorrow night. <laughs> I, I still stand by that the amount of superhero shows we have yeah. and CW superhero shows, it yeah. it really does start to become like the same thing again and again. And we'll give our hot takes for sure. I was I was surprised that I was able to watch Titans. Yeah, yeah. I missed Tit- I finally finished Titans today actually because uh, last weekend I had gone camping and stuff and. And, I, and uh, I saw, I tried to avoid some spoilers, but I, I did end up getting spoiled a little bit, but I figured I still needed to watch it just to get it all in context. I was able to watch Titans in one sitting, very few sarcastic remarks as I'm viewing it. And I, I really liked it. And mm-hmm. it is, and I think why it works so well is because Corey and Dick were re- reunited and uh, they made me buy into that dynamic a little bit more and how I think both of them, I really like that. I also, yeah. it had, that episode had the first moment I enjoyed between Dawn and Dick. Mm. There's so? Because I, I really like when she confronts him and says, this is your fault. Yeah. We are going to fix this and then you're going to burn this to the ground or else I'm going to, and if you don't do that, I'm going to, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. That was I, I, powerful. That was, I really, I really enjoyed that moment. And, you know, that's sort of this Dick's failures and him trying to live up to whatever expectation and the ghost of the past has been a theme throughout this season. And I'm glad, like you said, I'm glad that they had Dawn confront him directly on that uh and, and and because honestly jason probably would not have been in the predicament that he he is in with deathstroke if dick had not been all secretive with titans 2.0 right well let's let's jason is also very annoying and i think everyone would want to tie him up and beat him up a little bit because he has that mouth <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, just, a <laughs> he doesn't do himself any favors. Okay? He does. Let's, he does let's remember that. There, it just it felt like a complete episode and moved things along. The one, the one thing I will say, how it ends. Spoiler alert: with Jason falling. <sighs> Yeah. Why? 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 Are you going to tell me? Because they the last time they did a cliffhanger with Jason, we got the following week a flashback episode. So mm-hmm. so now are we going to get another flashback episode? Well, this week, next week, it looks like we'll get Connor Kent. So so we we will not have resolution to what happened with Jason. Or will we? Or we or we might or we, we might. Or will we? However. Another good parallel to bring up with that classic falling scene is in the dark night, Joker falls out after um, Batman lets go. And and I think the way they shot it, it was intentional because yeah. the, the movements, just the way it was all angled, it was very reminiscent of that shot. It, it was very indeed uh, reminded me of that, that scene very much. So, and another little interesting note that the, uh, uh, team at DC Universe is having is with uh, Jason, whether or not Jason lives or dies. Uh, taking up a little, speaking of Joker, uh, years ago, DC Comics, when it had a um, poll to determine whether or not Jason Todd would live or die in the comic book. And they had the, the famous death in the family. And it was also, it was referenced actually in um, Batman v Superman when you saw mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know the scene there with Bruce Wayne looking at the yep, and uh, so they're so they had a poll, and of course back in 
the late eighties when they did it, uh, Jason was, uh, voted to be killed off. And so fast forward to 2019, they're doing it again. And, uh, it's, if you want to go to the DC universe website, you can actually vote on Jason's fate. Uh, and as of taping right now, I think it was slightly ahead to kill Jason. So, uh, I don't think it's going to, obviously they've, already produced season two so i don't think it has any outcome on it but it's just i guess a way to sort of gauge audience feelings towards that character right now interesting yeah very very nerdy very nerdy i saw it today i was like oh this is so cool i went like checked it out i actually did vote uh and i i did vote to kill jason <laughs> because it needs stakes I mean, there's yeah. something to be, if, if you were going to taunt it, then mm-hmm. do it, you know, yeah. because technically this is the second time they've taunted killing right. of Jason this season and they're never going to fall through until they do. And then it'll be shocking yep. and, and then we'll move on. But th- there is something to be said for stakes and how mm-hmm. killing characters like that are, are very helpful, Yeah. even though um, his dynamic is really good juxtaposition to to dick and what he's going through but let's not waste all of our time on titans tonight because we do have a bazillion other comic book tv shows to talk about considering will wants to do hot takes about all of the Arrowverse shows that premiere tonight (laughs) or this week i should say uh it's it's all a blur to me um yeah so will what did you think of the flashes season six premiere I'll just sum it up in two words. Flash. Uh, it's was, all a word. It's not, well, a lyric. How's that? That's all you need to know about that episode. They finally did it. After six years, they finally used the thing for Flash Gordon. And that's all you need to know about the episode. True. <laughs> Very true. I, yeah, yeah, that's, that sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a okay. It was a as a comic book nerd, it was as far as Chester, it was kind of cool seeing that character brought in from the comic books and uh, with Chester P. Runk and, and, and modernizing the character in the sense that Chester in the comics was completely physically completely different, and I, I don't know if it, they they clearly uh, to avoid any body shaming issues or whatever they they didn't make him large and all that kind of stuff, but uh, that was kind of cool. I mean, it was a nice little throwback to the, to, to the comic books, but yeah, but as Cisco said, the moment was right and they executed it perfectly. And that's really all I need to know about the flash this week. It, it was a good, like there wasn't anything where I'm, I cringed mm-hmm. there. There wasn't any big cringe worthy moments. It, it, it it meant the purpose of setting up the season. I was surprised by how much um, Dr. Bloodwork, I think that's the villain's mm-hmm. name. Yep. His connection to Caitlin. Um, mm-hmm. I did not pay attention to spoilers, okay? I've My timeline is mainly focused on Arrow, so I don't get blasted with a lot of Flash spoilers. So forgive me if the, everybody already knew that coming in. I did not. Um, I, I like that. I, I didn't really care for this whole thing about, Oh, let's, let's kill her, ha- kill her frost to have a life. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so there, it was, I think it was probably one of my, I per, here, I'll say it like this. I prefer this season premiere over Supergirls. Yes, I agree. Now, granted, Supergirl they they did they finally tell they finally tell um, Lana the truth about Supergirl and thank God because we had to spend like multiple episodes stringing that out and everything but but I like that moment and I really liked how Lana responded to it mm-hmm. where she did not she's still playing a game I think that's very that was a good choice that was. A choice I did not anticipate. And so it has me curious about the season. Everything to do with the paper sucked. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just a, it basically was a way to write to, to write Jimmy Olsen off the show. <laughs> He's, I mean, just last season, best season of yep. Supergirl, mm-hmm. and arguably one of the better seasons of an Arrowverse TV show. Yep. But every time they tried to we they tried to wedge in this whole thing about freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and everything. I was like, ah, I don't, I don't like this. I don't. I I have a journalism background, so I have my opinions about it and everything. So so the fact that this episode played into that really heavily, I was like, uh no, no. Where where's yeah. my bad guy? Where's my villain? Where's my setup? Where's my freaking agent of liberty? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I felt that same way and uh, it did it was very very uneven premiere. Uh, I think the the Lena Cara story uh, it worked uh, for me. It we finally are getting some resolution to it and we're moving it to the next level. Those scenes did work, especially at the end of the episode where uh, Kara's, not, excuse me, Lana's AI um, was like, why didn't you follow through with the plan to expose her? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so those, th- that worked for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the other stuff in the episode, I was just, it, it just, it kind of fell flat and um, hopefully things will pick up. But uh, honestly, with, with all these shows, Everything really is just focused around just getting to crisis. Crisis. And any time, offhandedly, like another show that premiered this week, Black Lightning, I think at one point in the episode, one of the characters says, there's a crisis in freedom, Freeland. Mm-hmm. And I, I cringed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop I think it. I'm, I, I'm over crisis. Yeah, I think somehow, I think they'll keep Freeland and Black Lightning separate at least at least the first half of the season. Oh, I they I don't think that they said it to allude yeah. to that, right. but Good it point. just was part of the dialogue and yeah. the, because we that's all we have been talking about for almost a year. Yeah, yeah. It is it is, it is basically crisis has in a it's way It's my triggered sh- word. It's my trigger word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it has it has basically Swallowed up the, the the whole Arrowverse at this point because everything else to it is sort of like okay we're, we're beyond it being an appetizer at this point as far as the season coming back it's more like let's just get right to the main course and and given how they set things up at the end of last season with all the other respective shows maybe they should have spent the first part of the season doing Crisis instead of saving it to the till till the middle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Black Lightning. Uh, I did not expect it to start where it started. Mm. I feel as if the the Jefferson family they got confronted with the ASA agent at mm-hmm. the very end. Yep. And and immediately in this first episode, we 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 learn what what that means for the family and some deals were made some promises are are needed to be kept and the family's torn apart to a degree yeah yeah so so i like that idea there was something missing and i'm still trying to figure out what it was in terms of really getting me excited for the season so so voodoo isn't that his name who appears at the very end uh, oh, uh, yeah, the uh, Painted Man? Yep. yep. He, I, I don't like him as a villain. He's not my favorite guy. Yeah. I was surprised to see him back. I thought I thought last season that he was finally dispatched and we weren't going to see him anymore. But I feel yeah, like that I, happens every season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I don't like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like he's, he's back. I'm like, okay, I thought you were done, but. Yeah, I I like the I I think this at the season premiere it was you know we did have the time jump and Jefferson's in this protective facility creepy moment funny moment with when Jefferson and Lynn were there together and you know Lynn was uh, they were wanting to have an intimate moment and 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 then Agent uh, Odell shows up like right in the moment like 
where they were in, <laughs> in a very creepy kind of way. So it, it, it just reinforced that creepiness factor with, with that character that sort of just carried through pretty much uh, from his introduction. It's, thinking back to last season when he had the house under surveillance and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So, you know, again, just shows the, I guess, how the ASA is everywhere. Um, I, I like the, I'm, I'm anticipating this Markovian tie-in, especially with the news today of um, Wayne Brady being cast mm-hmm. as a grave digger, great grave digger who apparently is, um, was a World War II super soldier, Captain America. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and after the war, couldn't live in a segregated America, so he actually went to Markovia. So I, I'm looking forward to how this all unfolds because this this character is supposed to be a superior tactician, uh, obviously super soldier. So uh, one thing I've noticed that it seems that they're doing with Black Lightning this season is expanding this universe beyond Friedland mm-hmm. uh, because. Um, into a much larger larger world with with this Markovian war. Yeah, I think that'll be if they do it right, then you could get a good parallel between Jefferson and his family and how they are a team. They there is a strong connection. They're a unit. Um, most of them are gifted and have these powers and these abilities. In comparison to Grave Digger, where if he's a super soldier, he's much more aligned with that life of solitude and mm-hmm. independence and and um, not necessarily doing things what's best for your family but duty above all else right. so you could really do some good parallels there um but we'll just we'll have to wait and see if it's going to just become another missed opportunity for the Arrowverse. you yeah. know we shall so so uh, that woman yeah Again, I I really, I think I did myself, I think I would be in a very, I would have a lot of different, that I would have a very different perception on these shows if it was a few years ago when I, even after Comic-Con, I kept up to date on all the spoilers and all of the hints and everything. But I, I went into Batwoman pretty much blind. I, I didn't have a lot of knowledge of what to expect, and I was pleased. Mm. I do have to say, overall, after watching it, I said, "Yeah, okay, all right, I, yeah. I like this." The, the, the character dynamics. Mm-hmm. I really like relationship with the stepsister. Yeah, yeah, that was so surprising. I did. I, I was like you. I, I pretty much was pretty cold as far as all the other supporting characters and who's going to be in the show and that kind of thing. So it, it, I, I also came into it fairly blind um, mm-hmm. b- beyond uh, just some of the you know, sort of highlights of things like Ruby getting hurt and some other. Um, and then of course what we saw her introduction last year in Elseworlds. Yeah. Yeah, so this her stepsister um, was a character I wasn't anticipating, and and I like how we discover more about her stepsister as as um, Kate does mm-hmm. because she doesn't realize that this that her her stepsister um, is going out and basically or incident accidentally created a clinic. Yeah. <laughs> for the pearl and and it's just it's the right thing to do and there's there's a shared interest there because that's very much how kate's driven kate's driven by doing what's right and necessarily and not necessary power greed or fame mm-hmm. so i i like that dynamic i like the dynamic between kate and lucas as kate comes to wayne tower as someone who had a deep connection with her, her cousins cousin, first cousins her yeah. cousin. Remember, Penny, so, Penny, Pennyworth helped us establish that relationship. Right. I, I just, so, so, so she comes to Wayne Tower, um, having this close relationship with her cousin. And then Lucas kind of, in his very Cisco, Felicity Smoke yeah. character type, yep. 
explains that actually he knows her cousin in a very different way than she could have ever imagined, even though Kate says it herself, no one has seen Bruce Wayne in three years. And other people have said, well, we haven't seen Batman in three years. Yeah. One plus one equals two. Two, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, that's, I I have to say, they've got to do it. They've got to do a better job of explaining explaining this because that is one major plot point that really just gnaws at me Mm -hmm. uh that how can you how could this bruce and batman disappearing at the same time not be figured out by now unless everybody in the city is just in in gotham is just stupid (laughs) well well i think lucas says no one has seen bruce wayne in almost two years or like I don't I don't just almost three years. So it gave him a um, I would have to rewatch the scene to find the exact wording. But it did, in my opinion, leave open this gap that Bruce Wayne is also smart enough to where he he would make an appearance and make it appear that that it wasn't it's not a coincidence i don't know right right, right. well because I, I knew i was trying to think back to the dark knight rises and you know we had that similar type of thing where bruce went underground he became kind of recluse uh but i think he still you know he still hosted things at wayne manor and stuff so that people would not put the two put the, the things together that you know he and batman were the same person but mm-hmm. Um, but you know, but uh, yeah, I think even I think even the showrunner. I think I was reading an article. Uh, she had mentioned that they they were going to have to address that particular point. Um, I, I think she maybe it was at New York Comic Con where it, where that was discussed. But um, but you know, but I mean that's just one quibble. Uh, you know, getting to some of your things. You, you mentioned Felicity and, and and Cisco with Lucas Fox, and and I think the one. Th- Thing I'm hoping that the show can do is to break itself free from the rest of the Arrowverse as far as the, the the structure. Because as I was watching the pilot, I, I agree I, it was enough there to keep me keep me engaged. I'm, I'm gonna stick with it, but at the same time, it was like I was seeing all the other shows and their and their and their constructs just coming back to me obviously the big you know obviously the big obvious one is the flashbacks arrow um and it was a very paint i felt like it was a very paint by numbers kind of Arrowverse show mm-hmm. and so i'm really hoping that they'll use this new i guess phase of the Arrowverse to use the mcu term to to really expand the the universe and and, and, and and approach things in a different way so that I'm seeing something original instead of wash, rinse, repeat, just plug in, plug in Batwoman for Arrow. Uh, I see. I didn't make the connections between the flashbacks and an arrow for some reason, the, the narration that for some reason made me think about Arrow, yeah, well, and, and it's dark and gritty and yeah. everything. And you have a moody character who just yeah. returned to town and is yeah. re- re- reconciling with all of these different yeah. relationships and her past, and and has something to prove and has daddy issues. So there's a lot, yeah, of and parallels. That's, <laughs> yeah, and, that, and, and that's my point. No matter whatever, no matter what viewpoint you're you're looking at it, I, I couldn't help but feel it tethered to the things we've already seen before and so i think to really make this show stand out it's going to have to like shake things up and and uh, granted it's the pilot so part of that pilot jo- job is to just sell viewers on okay this is a world that you're familiar with you know we have to you know we have to set up the pieces on the chessboard for you but I'm hoping as the series develops, it will start to take a little bit of creative chances. Um, that that, for example, Black Lightning does that 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 helps separate it from the other CW superhero shows. Yeah, I I'm not going to hold my breath on that because yeah, I don't. <laughs> it's it's they 
I don't want this to turn into the same thing we say about all of the other shows where it's 23 episodes. It's hard to do. It's hard to have that turnaround, but that's besides the point. I just, I understand what you're saying. And I mean, it's, it's, it, they, I guess what I keep thinking about is there, there was an article that got released either right before or right after the per- pilot and, um, I didn't read the article, but what I understood from it was that a lot of the headlines were saying about it is that the showrunner very much intentionally used similar shots and the same aesthetics as an arrow. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm not holding my breath, because I think that's just going to continue. Fair enough, fair enough. I don't I don't I don't think that's fair, but um, that's yeah. But as far as, but I mean, there are other things I did like about the pilot. Uh, I, uh, the, the, even though it was, saw it coming, but I think Alice and the Wonderland gang, they do it seem to be a, a very interesting villain, especially if they. Uh, you saw it coming. Uh, I saw it with the, 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 the jewelry. I mean, it was, it was, I, I wasn't like completely thrown and also uh putting the scene where they were in when they were she had batwoman or kate strung up and and easily could have like taken her out but she had some you know lines of dialogue that basically was like okay there was some familiarity there and then whenever we saw the incident on the road and explaining how Bruce didn't save the rest of the, you know, only say, obviously Kate was the only one that was saved and other people in her family died. I was like, Oh, okay. This is, this is the, this is the typical, this is the setup for why Alice has such um, malice towards Gotham and, and, and the rest of the, uh, and, and the crows because of, um, because of what happened, so, so I, I thought that they did a pretty good job of setting setting up that, and and it can have a good place to mind as far as uh, the the conflict for this first season. Yeah, I didn't see it coming. I um, probably because I think I was doing something else while watching the show, so I didn't make the connection with the jewelry. I thought it was an interesting twist, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I really like about the twist is the fact that Batman screws up. Yeah. And it's and it's all his fault. And there's gonna so it's 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 I don't know if this is a good or bad thing. How much of this show I actually like because of the Batman related elements of it and not necessarily because of the Batwoman related elements. Yeah. Well I think, you know, Supergirl had to reconcile that with Superman and you know, obviously, it's the. It, I think, as the series, hopefully, as the series develops, she, the the character of Batwoman will be able to really stand out and stand on her on her own merits, and yes, and 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 take the story to a place where, yes, the Batman was Gotham's savior for many years, but he let us down. And then we have this new champion who is who is with us and will, uh, I mean, again, it's hard not to compare it to another mass vigilante without any special powers. But, again, goes on this crusade to, to, to save save the city uh, and, and help restore Gotham to a place where uh, people feel comfortable, safe walking the streets at night. Yeah, yeah. I hmm. I don't I mean, know why I'm I'm like so so all over the place with this this show or anything because I well, actually really did enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I mean, I think we in our discussion here we're, we're we are showing the challenges that this series is going to have to overcome when you've had such a legacy in the first phase of the Arrowverse established with with Arrow and then subsequently the Flash and and the other shows. Uh, and, and that's where I think creatively they're going to have to do something 
different to 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 really break the mold. I mean, I know folks were talking about the ratings. How I think it was viewed by over a million folks, um, which you know people were like, "Oh, that's great, that's great," but no, um, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And uh, I know Supergirl premiered on another network, but you know, by comparison, I think it had I think five or six million viewers. Uh, Flash, I think when it premiered was what three million, I think so. I mean, if you're already, if you're just starting out with a million viewers um, on your pilot and with all the publicity and pub they put into it, I mean, it, it's, that's not much more than Krypton was doing. And we saw what happened to it. So. Yeah. CW is a different network. I know it's a different I'm network. Sorry. CW yeah. has hold, held on to shows far. Yeah. With far less viewership, so if they are going to put the money behind it, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think one of the most creative things that they did on the show is that Sophie and Kate didn't get back together at the very end, and it turned out that Sophie has a husband. I thought that was a really cool choice because what'll what'll be interesting is how they are very proud to have a LBGT. Q community representative mm-hmm. as the lead character who's played by an actress who is gay herself and openly gay. And and this character means a lot to a lot of people. It does. So how they can parade that but also stay true to this type of vigilante almost needing to remain signal single. Mm-hmm. You know? Because yeah. Because arguably, as much as I'm a Melissa shipper, um, they they really did have to stretch out that whole relationship to the very end. And then, um, yeah. So, all right. I, I'm pretty much... Super Hit Heroes are back. We'll yep. see what happens. I hope this doesn't just turn into a repeat of us um, saying the things that we've said for the past few years. But we'll see. Uh, well, what the showrunners do. Yep, yep. Well, that's why we, we, we have now the hot takes segment, so we can, if we want to do something, we can. If not, then, I mean, there's a lot of things that's coming up. Like, uh, one thing that's that's back that uh, has been gone for, seems forever, Mr. Robot. Mm-hmm. And... I'm so mad. You like, you, like, ruined... I had... I was so I was coming in here and I was preparing and I was going to say some stuff and then when you told me that I got the season finales confused oh boy it's just like my mind is now blank surface but continue <laughs> oh come on so, so what 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 were your okay what were your just general impressions of the of the return not, not I had no idea what the fuck was going on during the episode I had no idea Really? How so? No idea. <laughs> you know, it, uh, you know the, the previously the previously on Mr. Robot like continued for like twenty minutes, <laughs> or two two years and twenty minutes. <laughs> uh, it, I, it, you know, I was I was I have to say I was I was actually thrown off when it when the show first started with Angela and Price. Uh, talking on the on the lawn there in the in the uh, at his estate because I was like, wait a minute, this this happened last season. Why are we? I couldn't. I was trying to piece together where the conversation ended last in in season three and where things started in season four. Uh, so it 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 definitely, I definitely got thrown for a different reason. Um, when when this when the show first started, but I got thrown for that same exact reason. I was sitting there watching previously on, and then the next thing I know, Angela and Price are on a bench, mm-hmm. and the scene keeps going, mm-hmm. keeps going, and I'm thinking to myself, why do I feel like I've seen this before? But I don't know what's happening, and then I'm also trying to reconcile or style a spoiler I saw on Twitter the night before. And so in my mind, I'm like, somebody's going to die. Somebody's about to die. Right, right. And, and then it's just drawn out. And the longer the scene goes, the more some of my frustration with Sam Esmail. He's brilliant. Yeah. He, he's, he's a visionary. He's also very um, self-indulgent. 
And some of these takes during the the episode, I was like, snoozerama. Like, no, 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 I don't need to see Price walking, and he's still walking. Damn, he's still walking. (laughs) And then, wow. (laughs) Like, like and I get it. He has to remove the mic because they were listening the whole time. But there's just some of these shots throughout the episode where I'm thinking to myself, no, uh, we don't need to spend two minutes here because I still have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I, was, I was very upset after watching this episode because I I used to memorize episodes. I watched them over and over again in season one. I knew a lot about the show. I knew a lot about the, the making of it. Mm-hmm. And I had all my theories. And then a two-year hiatus yeah. occurred. Yeah. And suddenly, I am back in this place and very disoriented, very confused. But one thing I will say, the one of the savings graves and what I thought was actually done really well and I understood, and I wish they had actually pushed this more, was there was a strong parallel between this episode and arguably the pilot. Mm. Because in the pilot episode, we are introduced to Elliot as he threatens someone who has um, child pornography. That's right. That's right. And, and we are introduced to this vigilanteism because he has all of these skills on the web and able to hack people and everything. Well, we're that occurs for a good portion of this episode. Mm -hmm. Do do I really care about this this guy that they're hunting down? Um, and on all of the effort, no. And that's the one thing <laughs> because I was like, all right, wrap it up. I do not. Wh- why do I feel like we are we're we're wasting time? Like it was weird. I I understood the parallel and I thought it was clever, yeah. but it also just. I was thinking, kept thinking to myself, okay, what does this have to do with anything? Or what does anything have to do with anything? Because I have no idea what's going on with the show right now. Yeah, well, I think uh, as it unfolded, I know with with the lawyer, I mean, I thought that was, you're right, it it was a perfect callback to to the pilot. Uh, And the, I guess, hunting down, it gets to the larger, I think the threads that they established at the beginning of the episode with with Price and White Rose, you know, just a short little. I mean, White Rose's presence is is omnipresent. She's omnipresent. Everything revolves around her moving things on the chessboard. And one thing I did, you know, as far as those long shots, I mean, I thought those. We saw her at her at her estate and talking to the new Grant, and as far as her ultimate plan for Elliot. And so I thought those kind of things set up, set things up very well so that when we did get to what, to where Elliot was hacking and blackmailing, uh, Freddie, the lawyer, it, it really showed how White Rose is still is basically her end game is to get Elliot to do whatever she needs her him to do to, to achieve her ends and then dispose of them. So mm-hmm. there's that piece of it. I think the other thread with the price angle and killing Angela was necessary to get Elliot to basically become reckless because Elliot, whenever he's focused, would not have fallen for that honeypot. Mm-hmm. So that was very critical. Those moves were there to to basically, and, and you know, and then you know they had the quick flash of Angela. You know, dead Angela. At least we assumed Angela's dead. You know, because with, with this show, anything's possible. So, because uh, we know we heard a gunshot, but we don't see a body. We just see the flash. So, uh, in that moment where Elliot flashes back, but that was set up so he would just become reckless and he fell for the honeypot. But it was also a way to, I guess, tie back to season three when Mr. Robot and Elliot reconciled. Um, you know, we noticed Elliot was not doing much narration in this episode, and we actually got the 
a narration from 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 Mr. Robot as far as when they were you know, doing that mission. So it it, it was it was it, I could under it's easy it's very easy to get kind of thrown off kilter because again it it was sort of flipping the script and and the things and the norms that we've gotten to know about this show. So understand how you could feel kind of lost, especially given it's been two years. But once, you know, once we things started progressing, it was like, Oh, I see. I I think I see where, where they're going with this. And of course he gets in the honeypot, gets captured. And then of course that ending, I mean, damn, I was like, they're going to kill Elliot. And they did kill Elliot. And I was, and then I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, holy shit, are, they, are, are we going to have a season of like, how are they going to, how are they going to unfold all of, all of that? Uh, but of course, you know, then Price shows up and is it because of Angela's speech that gets him to, you know, basically recruit Elliot to basically be his sleeper agent to take down White Rose? Or is this part of White Rose's ultimate plot? I mean, there's just so many different ways that can go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um I guess I'm maybe a little bit over Mr. Robot and, well, and it, well, it's just I mean it everything that you just explained it makes sense. It just when I'm actually watching it, I'm not engrossed. Um because I don't I don't know there there's just there's a lack of feeling and emotion and like i didn't really care that angela died i i was like okay that makes sense she is a yeah. liability yeah. um and but but i also i I've, I've spent so so much time removed from that relationship between elliot and angela that how hard he's taking it or even how hard darlene took it mm-hmm. It didn't make sense to me because I'm like, mm, okay, so when's the last time you two hang out, hung out? Yeah. So, so it's very, it's, um, the stakes aren't there. Like maybe if they had done that mid season, I would be like, oh my God, I, I would, I wouldn't believe that they would kill. I, I didn't buy into that. Granted by that point, I was just like, okay, let me skip ahead here. What's going <laughs> on? Got it. Okay. I don't know. Understand the point. Um, it did remind us that hey, FYI, Elliot is a drug addict. That was a major part of season one that I feel like has has yeah. just lingered in the background for the last few seasons. So it was interesting that it got brought back. Yeah. So yeah. it just I don't. I, even though again, everything you just explained, it makes sense. It makes sense on paper. Watching it though. I was bored. I was disconnected. I didn't feel the tension. I just felt like I was watching something play out and very confused because I it's been a few years since I've been in this world. So Yeah, yeah. And and I, I, and that's fair. I mean, I was looking at and I can the, only repeat that like five times. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I get it. I, mean, I was looking at the uh, ratings for the show, and and a lot of people are like you. Where I mean, well, quite honestly, the numbers were down. It was like only, I think half a million people, less than half a million people watched it. This the the, the, the uh, season premiere this this, this week, uh, and I know it was up against football and The Walking Dead and a couple of other things, but uh, you know, I think th- maybe the, the world is like you. They they've moved on and. And, you know, so maybe it is a good thing that the show is coming to an end because I think, you know, and this is something, you know, whenever we did our, uh, we did our guest shot on the um, Mr. Rewatch podcast, you know, we were wondering, like, uh, would the the time and real time elapse in, in the real world cause us to not care about the show or, or not be as engaged with it? And, and I think... You, as someone who introduced me to this show, uh, and how passionate you were about it when you when you introduced it to me, uh, and, and seeing where you are at this place now, um, I, I think a lot of a lot of viewers are, are are probably are like you, where it's sort of like, 
well, you know, it, it was groundbreaking, revolutionary when it first aired, but you know, kind of time has 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 moved on, and I'm just not into this world anymore. I I don't know if it's not that I'm not into the world anymore. It's that okay. if you go back and watch season one, yeah. there is a clear story being told. There is a there is a um. <sighs> It's like opening a present. Like you, the first episode, you're taking off the bow. The second episode, you're unwrapping the package. And then you open the box. And then all of this other stuff happens. And it's, you're getting deeper, deeper, deeper. And there's a character that was so fucking relatable. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not, I'm not, I've never been a drug addict. I don't do drugs. I, I don't even really drink. Yet there was something about the isolation, the loneliness, the, the trapped in your own mind and your own headsets and the need the need to feel numb the need to feel like um to to just get away from emotions of grief of trauma from your childhood that was very relatable especially to people of of my generation and probably your own generation well where especially in the time we are now with social media so there was a lot it it felt current yet it also felt authentic and that dynamic between elliot and mr robot and when you realize that elliot mr robot's the father and the the image and there's a mental illness and there's an unreliable narrator all of that was fascinating yet sam esmail i feel like took that success and started focusing more on the the images and the 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 surface level of what he was able to do by being ground a groundbreaking visionary and focus more on those shots as opposed to the story Mm. like the story threads are starting to unravel and it's starting to feel like let's do a twist for the sake of a twist Mm. you know let's let's have it set up in the next season that Elliot's in jail. Oh no, no, no. He's, he's not in jail. He, he made this all up or, or he did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have that season. Right. But there's like this twist where like what you're seeing is not what you're really seeing. You're just thinking. So, so it just, it it started to diminish. So I still very much like this world. I just, I'm not as, I don't feel like it's as real as in season one, maybe. Right, right. Well, and I think that's, I think, you know, that's a common feeling that season two did what you just said. It, it went off into this real, this, this track that uh, focused on things that probably did diminish the, 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 what made season one so unique. And then they tried to recapture that in season three, which I thought, some of it did do that and got back to basics. And, 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 and I think obviously with some of the callbacks in the pilot, uh, in this episode with, with, you know, with Freddie being the same parallel with the character in, in the first episode, but the different, but this time the, the, the ends being different in that Elliot was just trying to, you know, use, use Freddie to, to get to, to, to white Rose um and so yeah so i think he's trying i think they're trying to do that again this season and yeah i mean there were some things that felt like you know twists for twist's sake but at the same time they narratively within the story it made sense for where we are in this final act of of mr robot on that note, I think that's it for us tonight. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will and Polk. That's W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me at S J Belmont. S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Cena Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Spotify. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. 